Okay, so I've just got home and had a 30 minute hot shower from the Australian Alps walk. Surveying all the leech bites and blackberry scratches on my legs. Um, but first things first, I want to do a bit of a pack a review of what I carried because um, I need to dry some of this stuff off quick smart. Um, so I'll do it now, I'll unpack it. It's going to be a bit ad hoc. There's going to be clothes mixed in with this and that. And so, yeah, we'll do what we can do. I'll go through the loose stuff first. Um, so I used Hocker Speed Goats. One pair for the whole trail. Now, I haven't done the stats yet. I'm guessing it was around 800 k's plus side trips. Um, believe it or not, they've still got tread on them. A bit hard for me to understand. Um, I thought they might be wearing through. Where they are wearing through is on the side here. There's a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, little bit of a gap there. So they are pretty well cactus, but 800 k's for a pair of speed gates on the Alpine track, I reckon is um, poor. I reckon is um, not bad going. They'll do for around town for once I wash them. Um, also on the ground, yeah. So I took a peak cap to wear under, to wear, obviously keep the sun off my face, but also under my wet weather gear to stop the, the visor kind of going down in front of my eyes. Um, look, this is cotton, not, not ideal. Probably, you could probably buy a synthetic at one of the outdoor shops. This one does me though. Um, it's only just, yeah, got a bit wet today and yesterday. I used quite a few pairs of these like ankle socks. These are uh, Mac Pack. Um, I'd put a spare pair in my food drops or maybe two pairs in my food drops. I actually like the ones that go above the ankles. I think they're called crew socks. These ones go below the ankles. It makes you feel a bit naked. Your ankles feel a bit naked sometimes, but this is what I used. They worked well. Um, but yeah, I, I go for the ones that are a little bit higher normally. And lastly, for the feet, a pair of D-Girl Gators. These ones, these ones last the 800 Ks, but they're pretty well stuffed. They're starting to come to bits now. Um, so, you know, I think they only cost about 30 bucks, so they're not very expensive, but you can see that the ends coming off there. They just help keep the, the um, dirt and stones out of my shoes and my socks. Um, and they work well with trail runners, where normal gators don't really work that well with trail runners. On my hands, most of the time, I just wore these cycling, these um, mountain bike fingerless gloves with the pad across the front. Um, nothing special there. They're about 20 bucks at Anaconda. Everything's ringing wet and they're ringing wet too. Um, also, while we're on the stuff that I've got sitting on the ground there, uh, trekking poles, a couple of lecky trekking poles. Um, I need these for my tent, Kumbo Light layer. Um, these poles lasted the whole trip, no real problem at all. Um, I have had trouble with the screw type poles before, but these cam locks work a lot better. Um, so these will be starting on the high sun with me in a couple of weeks. And, okay, so this is, this. I'm digging through the stuff now that I wore home or wore at the end of the trail, so that's why it's not in the pack. So this Columbia shirt, usual Columbia kind of fisherman bushwalking shirt. Um, looks a bit grey, stinks. But came through the trip pretty good. It'll be alright after it's had a wash. The thing with these is they cover you from the sun and they dry really quick um, when they get wet. Well, this is already dry. Um, so yeah, I tend to wear Columbia shirts, long sleeve shirts on most of my walks. Don't wear short sleeves very often when I'm out walking. I've got a pair of... Um, one of these MacPack cape pulls, cape shorts that I wore the whole trip. They got washed a few times, obviously. Same with the shirt. Um, 
these got the Lycra Lana, um, very comfy um, and a lot of leg movement. Highly recommend them. Well, I think they don't make them anymore. I'm not 100 sure on that. Or there's a slightly different design. I've got a MacPack fleecy kind of hoodie thing. This is good, really light. Um, I think it shrinks, so uh, you gotta be careful how you wash it because this seems to be getting shorter and shorter on oh, me and it's an extra, it's the biggest size they make. The other thing is it doesn't like Velcro, so, and it doesn't like, you can see it's beating up. Um, any kind of bushes or any, anything that can stick to it will. Still warm, just doesn't look as nice. Um, but for the weight, I mean, you're talking 100 grams, I guess, for that. Dries in a second and does add a fair bit of warmth, surprisingly enough. So I recommend them, but they're just not that hard wearing. Uh, under it all, when I'm walking, just an icebreaker t-shirt, um, just as a base layer. Can't go wrong with icebreaker if you can afford it, they cost a fortune. Um, good thing is, even after walking from Hotham to Walhalla, that one, that's the one piece of gear that doesn't really smell. Uh, overpants. So, I mean, when you're walking in rain in Alpine areas, you need some overpants, but I tend to not go for the Gore-Tex. These are just cheapy nylon ones. I think I got them in New Zealand, actually. They're called uh, Blizzard. Um, the good thing is I can slide them on over my shoes so I don't have to take my shoes off to put them on. But they did fine. Um, and they also protect me a little bit from the leeches and the blackberries. And if you tear them, 20 bucks you get a new pair. Um, so yeah, highly recommend the overpants, particularly if you're going a early or late in the year when you might get some inclement weather. Um, I was, this is a Z-Pax Vertex, Vertex? Um, Gore-Tex jacket. Um, it's got the pit zips. Huge size, I think this is an extra large. They go to about two or three extra large. Um, but this is way big enough for me. Now, it won't keep you warm, it's only a single layer, but it will keep you pretty dry. Um, there's plenty of room, it's the sizing wise, plenty of room underneath to, um, to chuck on half a dozen. I was wearing three layers under it sometimes, four layers. So, actually, surprisingly enough, I, have, I don't think I've got any nicks from all the blackberries, so I think it's survived. Because the one thing you worry about with this, it's very light, probably only weighs two or 300 grams. The one thing I worry about is the longevity, but it seems to be, it seems to have escaped the Alpine track in reasonably good nick. Okay. Um, oh. uh, everything's just mixed up here. Had the Bushmans out today, just this little can just for the leeches. Today was the only time I actually used the Bushmans the whole trip, but I reckon I had 15 leeches on me this morning, so I suppose, you know, I needed it. Um, this is just a snap lock that I used to carry on the outside of my pack with like maps and it's got a, a waterproof case for my iPhone, got some lens cleaners, nothing exciting in here. Now, this stuff I might need during the day. I just put them in one of these sealable snap locks and yeah, it's just handy rather. These, these um, HMG packs are one piece. There's not a lot of compartments in them. So I just have this on the outside and it's survived the whole trip without any nicks or anything. Um, what else have I got on the outside? An Algerian water bottle, clear one with the measurements on the side. So I can, uh, just helps me when I'm rehydrating food and that. I shove a one litre Gatorade with every food drop and, um, and then I'd use it as a water bottle once the Gatorade was drunk. So that gave me two litres on the outside of my pack, which is more than adequate for the Alpine track. Um,
Rubbish. Oh, just bear with me while I go through this stuff. And so I keep like emergency pills and toothbrush in the gut belt in my pack. Can you see the gut belt there? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go through that. It's just like a Panadol and antihistamines and things like that. And there's a little toothpaste. I've got, <laughs> this is how old I am. When I first started bushwalking, this is what we used to sleep on. Um, now I use it as like a yoga mat, but I've sacrificed one as a, for a sit mat. So I just strap this to the top of my pack. And um, yeah, it's, it's amazing how comfortable it is to sit on. Also, if it's cold at night, I can put it under my feet. Um, and at the edge of the tent, that kind of works like a barrier where your feet go to keep the cool air away from your feet. Um, so for the weight of it and the cost, yeah, brilliant. I'd keep, yeah, I'd keep, now this isn't going to look good because of the rain day. I'd keep a map that I was following in the pocket of my, of my, um, of my pack so I can pull it out during the day. Probably print these on waterproof paper if you're gonna photocopy Mr. Chapman's maps, if you can afford the, afford the dollars. Um, I couldn't, so I just went on normal paper. In the other pocket, I've got my reading glasses because I'm old. Um, and I carry, to keep all the gadgets charged, I carry two of these, one in an outside pocket and one stashed away in the, inside the pack. Um, and this was good for about two of these, charging my phone, which I'm videoing, taking photos, doing social media, talking to Sam, texting friends and, and family, um, charging the inReach, charging my headlamp. What else is there? Charging my Fitbit. Um, one of these, two of these, sorry, would last me probably eight days, fairly comfortable. Um, and I'd stash a few of these in food drops along the way. But yeah, this is a signet in case anyone's wondering. Okay, got the, got the inReach. I'm not gonna pull it off. I've got the inReach with the carabiner kind of fairly well attached here. Um, I do most of my hiking solo and I'm lucky that my wife lets me do it. And it's nice that she can actually keep track of me. So if, if something did happen and a branch landed on my head or whatever, she would at least know where to send people to look for me, where the last ping was. Um, highly recommend these. I don't use the communication feature that much. It's more the tracking and the emergency, like the EPIRB kind of features that are handy. All right, that's the outside. Oh, hang on, not quite. One more pocket. A bit of mess I'm making on the floor here. Okay, so, a pair of Bluetooth headphones. Um, at the end of a long day, if you're trudging up a hill on a fire track, it can be nice just to put on a podcast or something to take your mind off the pain. Um, so carry, or you know, if you're bored shitless at night in the tent, you can listen to a podcast or something. So I carry those, those, they last for about, the battery in here lasts for about eight days and the headphones themselves last for about eight hours per charge. Um, Petzl, I don't know if it's a Zoom. The only problem with the Petzl with this newer model, and there is a brand new model, this is last year's one. It's very easy to accidentally touch, like in your pack, it's very easy to something touch that and you, you find it, you go out to get your light out, it's been on all day. I believe the new model's got a lock that locks that one. So what I do to stop it accidentally discharging is I spin the cover around and, and have the kind of head, the headband against the, against the button and shove it into my, shove it into my pack that way and it, can, it seems to have stopped the accidental um, activation, I suppose you'd call it. 
but they're a good torch. Plenty of plenty of life in them. Plenty of um, plenty of life in the battery, and plenty of depth and vision. All right, let's get into the pack now. Oh, this is going to be messy. So this is a HMG pack. I don't know. It folds like a dry bag. Has a, has one that goes over the top where I put my sit mat, and then this bit here rolls down like a dry bag. Um, keep in mind it's been in the rain and snow for two days, so it's not exactly dry at the moment. This is my food bag. That's a bit wet. There's some leftover food in there, but um, yeah, I normally leave my food bag near the top because that's where I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna want during the day. Okay. This is my HMG tent that I used in this walk. <coughs> so, this is the outer tent, the white bit. I'm not gonna obviously pull it out, it's covered in dirt. It's <coughs> probably got ice in there, leaves. Um, so you pitch the outer like a pyramid, and then this is the inner that go with the floor, the tub floor and the and the fly mesh or the insect mesh sides. I use obviously use the outer every night. I use this a lot in Victoria, not so much up in New South Wales where the weather was better. Um, obviously down in Victoria the weather got a little bit worse and it got a bit more buggy, got a few leeches and mozzies and that. So the inner is good. The, the bathtub floor is amazingly um, resilient in this thing. Um, it takes it takes up a little bit of room when you look at it. Um, but we're talking, well, they're all ringing wet at the moment, but you're talking probably just over a kilo for them. It takes up, it, it looks heavier than it actually is. This is the first trip I've used this Ultimate um, 2 tent on. I originally got it because I was thinking of doing the Alps in winter um, and I needed something that would shed snow and wind. Um, and then that got cancelled because of the Brumby, sh Brumby shoot up north. It didn't stretch the tent at all on this walk. I had some pretty heavy winds on the Ball Ball Plateau when I was up at Mount Whitelaw. Um, and I couldn't, you couldn't even see the walls moving. Um, it doesn't kind of make sense to me, but it's incredibly stable. And I could see the snow running down the sides of the, like dr dr drifting down the side of the tent when I woke up in the morning. So it does seem to shed snow and it does seem to shed wind. It's, I'll have to do a video about this one day on its own. It's, a, it's an incredibly, it's a little bit quirky. It takes a bit to put it up. You would think, you would think a square tent with a centre pile would be simple, but it, to set it up nicely, if you're a little bit kind of train spotterish, spotterish about how you like your tent set up, it takes a bit of work to get it perfectly square. Um, and there's a few quirks with it. The insects, the insect mesh, when you put that in, the min when you put that in, if you use it, it actually folds down into, or actually hangs down into the tent and takes up a bit of a fair bit of the usable room. Now it doesn't really, you can just touch it and push it out. It doesn't, there's no weight in it. And that's all I did. It just looks a lot smaller when you've got the insect mesh in. Um, Compared to my other, my z -Pax tents, the condensation, or put, compared to most tents that I've used, there was minimal condensation in this. Um, I did suffer when I was down beside a watercourse on the grass, which is why I try to camp high most of the time, but any tent's gonna suffer there. Um, but yeah, condensation wise, so you wake up in the morning and your quilt would still be pretty dry, whereas some tents you wake up in the morning and it's like you've been rain down in the tent, your quilt's all wet. So these, highly recommend this tent, not cheap though, you're looking well over a grand for both these bits of kit. Um, but if you're camping somewhere, it could save your life. So I'll do another video on this one day, I'll actually put it up and we'll go through the pros and cons. Okay, oh, this sad looking bag is my toilet bag. So, I think I need a new one of those. So anyway, I just keep hand sanitizer, some wet wipes, cigarette lighter, toilet roll, and, and a little trowel, lightweight trowel. That's always, 
not too deep in my pack. Um, I've got a couple of these Dyneema carry bag, waterproof carry bag. So just got a day pack. Um, it's handy if you're doing a side trip, like I went up the pilot or whatever. I could chuck a litre of water, chuck my EPIRB, a map or whatever in there. Save me trying to carry it in my hands. Um, look, it's an option you could probably do without. Um, and this is my sunglass case. And it's got my snake bandage in it. Um, to be honest with you, saw one snake up on Mount Brimbury or Brimbury Peak. I think snake bandage, one snake bandage is worth having. Um, but I suppose if you really want to go ultra light, you, you'd say, well, why'd you carry that all the way? Um, so yeah, that's all good there. Um, this is just like old man's first aid kit, medicine, pills, painkillers, and in flams. Might go into that. This is, I think this is my electrical stuff. Yeah, so this is just electrical leads to charge all my, my gear that we kind of went through. So Fitbit, um, phone, head torch. Um, um, in reach, there's a few things I had to make sure I kept charged, so that's in there. Um, oh, this is just so I ditched my water filter at Threadbar because I just had the shits with just trying to squeeze water through a, a pinhole, and I went back to the old way of, of aqua tabs. There's some aqua tabs in there, <laughs> these are just. Hand warmers or toe, these are, these are hand warmers. I used a few of those actually, they're quite, they're the luxury. Um, so that's that one, there's another one of these. This is uh, where I normally keep my, um, some, my um, insect repellent. And I also keep some sunscreen. Like the insect repellent, I only got used once. So, I don't know, I might, I might drop that for the Hyson. Pawpaw cream, does multiple things, rashes or whatever you need it for. Um, I got some dental floss here, I could probably ditch the container maybe, but we're not talking much. And inside that container there's a needle in case I want to use the dental, dental floss to sew any gear up. So that's kind of why I kept the container. Um, and this is a little thing, a heel balm. So, if my heels get a bit dry, I kind of put some of this on at night with a sock and, and um, try and keep them in, because you try and keep them in good nick. And my, like I said, my Bushman's also goes in there. That's my wallet that I haven't got out yet. That's my other battery to go with this one. Exactly the same. Probably the one thing I never touched the whole trip, my compass. Um, but you gotta have it, but yeah. I suppose if everything else fails, you've got your compass. But I can't remember the last time I used my compass in anger, to be honest with you. I'm not saying don't carry it though. And I've got uh, just some lens cleaners and, a, and like a, a, a water absorbent thing, soak stuff up. All right, push that over there. Okay, this is my buff. Wouldn't go anywhere without at least one buff. Handy in the sleeping bag. Handy to keep your head cool, uh, warm, sorry, in the quilt. Because I haven't got a sleeping bag, I'm using a quilt without a hood. Now here's a pair of gear that I'm not gonna take again, I don't think. So these are my sealskin gloves. I got these over in Scotland many years ago. And they just don't, they just don't keep my hands warm. And they don't keep my hands dry either, so, which I thought was the purpose. Um, they're ringing wet now, they're gonna take days to dry out. So what I'm gonna do on the next, on the heist, is probably take my comfy gloves that aren't waterproof and maybe get some dishwashing gloves. Some of those pink dishwashing gloves and put them over the top. Um, if I need to waterproof, because these are, I reckon these are a waste of space. And they're not light either. 
So yeah, they're in the not to go again trip bucket. Uh, this is my little cooker. Well, this is just the pot. I swapped out the gas cartridges at every um, food drop. And the last food drop, I had one of the to medium sized cartridges, which is bigger. This would last me about 20 days. The little ones I was using earlier in the trip last me about 10 days. That lives in, that was living in there. All my rest of my cooking stuff, like my, my, um, my spoon or my spork and my lighter and my knife is in with the food. I won't go through that. So this old peanut butter jar, I use for like cold soaking or rehydrating food. Um, I use a bit of textured vegetable protein and I could just pour some water in there and it'll just rehydrate. Um, another absorber, more socks. Keep in mind I was swapping these out. All right, these are, these were good. So these are, um, what are they called? Bridgedale waterproof socks. They do keep your feet warm and fairly dry. Um, I used them across the ball ball plateau yesterday when apparently the apparent temperature was minus seven with the wind chill factored in. And where my hands were freezing in the sealskin gloves, my feet, even though they were in snow, were toasty warm in these. Now they're ringing wet, the outside is, um, because it it's obviously hasn't stopped raining since, since then. But these are, these are good. They also protect me from leeches a little bit. Um, obviously the leeches can't bite through them. So I didn't have them on today when I got attacked by leeches, which may have been a mistake. This is my see the summit pillow yeah some people use the pillow some people don't some people use a camp chair i don't don't mind the pillow bit of comfort i need maybe because i'm a side sleeper and I, my shoulders are fairly big i need a bit of distance from it to support my head so i shove this in a pillowcase i use my dyneema triplex ground sheet when i especially when i was just sleeping under the fly weighs 50 grams maybe, um, and two people can easily sleep on that if you, if you had two people. For one, for me, on my own, plenty of room. Uh, when I camped high, sometimes I camped high because of the, um, to get away from the icy, dewy kind of creeks. So I'd have to carry water up to the tops of the hills on that where I camp. I'm thinking the Viking and a few other places. So I just have this MSR bladder, dromedary bladder, four litres, bulletproof. Um, I used it quite a bit. I use these, I use two dry bags to just keep my clothes in, um, dry my pack. This is another pair of socks and a guy line. Um, so what I do is put my clothes in, then I roll it from the bottom to get all the air out and then do it up, and it doesn't take much room. So a pair of pants, I think what I'm going to do next time on the Hyson is, um, is just take these and leave, leave and sleep in these, instead of sleeping in a pair of thermals and having these as extra. Um, I didn't use these that much unless I was in town, so Threadbow obviously I washed my shorts and I wore these around, but I could probably work out a way around that rather than have them as passengers the whole way. And these are the pants that I slept in. These are my just thermal. So I think on the high I'm going to leave these at home and sleep in these and just shoot so they're multi-purpose. Time will tell. Okay, what's in my little bag of tricks next? Okay. I've got my event stuff sack, which isn't waterproof anymore. But anyway, it's about ooh, 25 years old, I think, so I'm not surprised. I might get away with the next two long walks with it, I might not. Um, so this is my Puffy. It's a, it's a rad one I bought in Scotland. How long ago? 20 years ago? 15 years ago, 12 years ago, okay. Got my camera assistant, Samantha, over there. 
Um, this is nice, nice jacket. Keeps me, keeps me warm. Obviously with the down, you want to keep it dry, uh, which is why it's in the stuff sack, um, with my quilt. Now I use a quilt, not a sleeping bag mostly, um, because I just like the extra room and they, they're comfy as anything. Unfortunately, the company that makes this tier gear aren't making quilts, aren't making gear anymore. Um, so the tier gear were a Tasmanian company. I've got two of their quilts. This one's good down to about minus two. Now I got way colder than minus two. I reckon I was down around minus five sometimes when it was an inch of ice all over the tent. I just chucked an extra layer or two on. I never had to really wear, I had, I never wore more than one layer and a pair of socks. Um, and it kept me warm, but I am a hot sleeper. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend the Tiggy quilt, although you won't get one anymore unless you buy a second hand. There's my vent bag. Oh, this is just another bag. A few more bits of clothing in. So it's a little pillowcase with some elastic that I have sewn to it, that Sam sewed to it, that keeps it attached to my mat so it doesn't move around. This is my icebreaker thermal that I sleep in. It's actually an insulated, it's a hoodie. It also comes up around, kind of comes up around your mouth. Uh, it's hard to kind of do. So it's got the hood, but it's also got a bit like a balaclava bit that comes up around your mouth. Plus it's got insulation on the front. They're very toasty warm, that thing. Yeah, and that's about it for clothes. Yeah, and this is my Thermo Rest Neo Air. I love this mat. It keeps me so warm. It's quiet. Oh, I reckon it's quiet. That might you know, that might be why I'm sleeping on my own all the time. Um, it's had a fair bit of life in it now. It's gone all through. I can't remember when I got it. It was well before I did the Grampians Peaks last year. I think I've had it for probably two or three years. No problem at all. Keeps on going. Yeah, it's a little bit on the heavy side, probably, probably 500 grams, 600 grams, but I think it's got an R value of like 6.5, so it keeps me so toasty warm, and it's the biggest, big, big size. Is that it? That is it. And lastly, no, hang on, no, it's not. My Camp Papianas. These are the second pair for the trip, the whatever it is down at Gill Creek 8, my last pair. So I was a little bit more careful with them, remembering to bring them in the, inside the tent on for the rest of the trip. But yeah, I'd look, you can do without camp shoes, I suppose, but on a huge, well, I call 800 odd k's a huge walk. It's nice to be out, especially when you get to town, to slip on something a little bit more easy on your feet and let your feet breathe a bit. Um, these are actually too small, a smaller size. I wouldn't wear them normally, but they're perfect for walking. Um, and yeah, then there's the HMG pack. Now this has done a lot of work, this pack, a lot of off-track stuff. Um, and it's actually holding together fairly well. These mesh pockets, I'm gonna have to, I've got some um, fishing line then I'm going to have to kind of re-thread it to try and, there's a few holes developing in the mesh pockets. Because obviously you bring, drink bottles kind of stick out the side and the scrub catches them or the rocks. But really it's done, well it's done the Alpine tracks, it's done the Grampians Peaks, it's done the Larapunda, it's done Jack Buller, it's done many other walks before that and I can't remember, like I remember it's done off-track feather top. Um, it's done the boat on the high planes numerous times. So look, it's for a Dyneema pack, a, a fairly lightweight pack. The pack comes in at less than a kilo, it's 65 litres. It's a wind rider, I think, 65 or something. And it's fairly waterproof. Obviously, if you're in the rain all day and it's pouring with rain, it, it's got like breathing holes at the bottom, so the water will get in. But it's compared to most packs, it's breathable, it weighs bugger all. It's got a very basic frame, um, so it sits well. Carrying, I was carrying about 17 kilos, 16 kilos. It sits well on your back. The padding on the stra straps is fine for me. Maybe not enough. Some people like it a bit 
a bit lusher, a bit more plush. Same with the bottom ones, there's, there's enough for me, but yeah, I, I recommend it. Um, I'll be getting another one for sure. So look, that was, uh, that's the gear. Quick gear breakdown for my Australian Alps walking track adventure. I'll do a whole another video on the dirt, which is like the logistics of walking the track, food drops, maps, all that kind of gear. Um, probably next. Um, I need to organise some stats and organise some stuff before. I can't just do that, ad lib that. Um, I'll talk about where I got mobile service and a few other things. But yeah, I hope this is um, helpful for someone. But keep in mind, gear's a funny thing. What works for me doesn't necessarily have to work for you and you don't have to have a Dyneema pack or a HMG tent to do the Alpine track. I mean, I, last time I used an MSR and an Osprey and I was fine. Um, but yeah, this is what I use this time and this is what worked for me and I hope, it, I hope this is helpful to someone. All right, thanks. Catch you next time.